The GM transformation process causes mutations, genetic mutations, can result in unintended alterations in food composition, such as new toxicants and allergens, food allergies, right? Mentioned that already. And the altered nutrient content. Nutrients can affect our epigenome. Now, our genes don't change quickly. It takes thousands of years. But what is change are these little, these little proteins and um, little groups on top of our genome. They're called our epigenetics, and those are affected by nutrients. And that's the study of uh, nutrigenomics, a relatively new field of medicine. You are what you eat, right? Gene product. Bt toxin may be toxic or and or allergenic in itself, and farming. The use of GMOs increases toxic, toxic exposures, as you saw by that map and that film shown by John Willack. Um, increased toxic pesticide residues and crop contamination. So we understand the process. We understand how this is happening. So the findings you may find um, in lab animals fed GMOs, this is um, probably not even a complete list, but this is what they have. Look at this. Altered blood biochemistry, effects on male fertility, stomach lesions, allergic reactions, immune disturbance, enlarged lymph nodes. I see kids with big lymph nodes all the time. By the way, changes in organs such as liver, pancreas, hormonal disruption, endocrine disruption, liver and kidney dis uh, damage. You saw the changes in the gut lining from Dr. Pusey's work. Others have done it too. The uterine lining in pigs and other animals is heavier often. And alteration of the gut bacteria. Don't mess with your microbiome. Some more, this is a quick showing you now modern techniques using electron microscopy of the changes as well. How do I treat it? How do I deal with these effects? Simple, we eat organic. I often have to put children on certain elimination diets, usually gluten and dairy, but I can often bring it back. Probiotics restore their nutrients and we detoxify them. It's not that complicated. Just the process of genetic engineering gives an extremely high likelihood of developing a foreign protein. So what's that mean to us then as far as the foreign protein? How does that affect mammals? <clears throat> that foreign protein enters the digestive tract, an alarm goes off, that, 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 foreign invader, foreign invader, do something. Immune system does its job. I'm gonna step away from the mic, you'll hear me. I am the immune system, here's the foreign protein. I'm gonna get rid of it. 24 <laughs> 7, 365. What happens when I do this 24 hours a day? I get tired. So, do we have an increase in autoimmune diseases? I think Dr. Perro just spelled that out for us. In 1996, there was not GMO food in 85% of the processed foods in the grocery store. GMO ingredients, I should say. Today there is. Is there a change in the amount of mood altering medications that have been prescribed between then and now? Bayer also makes Aztec insecticide, Liberty herbicide, genetically engineered crops. And before they were purchased for by before Bayer purchased Monsanto for the sale price of $66 billion and $289 million worth of liability in the first case, before they bought Monsanto. Monsanto was owned by Pfizer Updrug Pharmacia. So we have established the fact that all the companies in the center of the circle are in the pharmaceutical and the chemical business. If the people eat the meat and they don't feel good, where do they go? After you go to the doctor, where might he send you with a, his autograph on a piece of paper? Does that present a positive cash flow for the company in the center of the circle? In the focus on solutions, my job these days is to focus on the dysfunctions and I've been studying the dysfunctions behind the media headlines and how is it that the dominant mainstream narrative has become to question the benefits of organic, to hype up the high-tech food future as appetizing and desirable. That's a tough PR job. Um, and I love that corn image on the front of popular science because it's just, yeah, this is how they're selling it. And then most especially how um, the propaganda campaigns have presented themselves as champions of science and have really uh, managed to paint the entire community of scientists, doctors, 
community activists, pesticide activists, moms trying to protect their children as, um, in the words of the GMO Impossible Burgers Communications Director, uh, anti-science fundamentalists. She wrote an amazing piece just excoriating everybody raising concerns about the burger. Um, so they're really sort of in desperate, in a difficult corner, let's say. One of the things that we see clearly from the documents is that the groups doing like the most hardline messaging um, really traced straight back to you know cutting their teeth, the founders of those groups with the Phyllis Morris campaigns to keep cigarettes unregulated. And so we have groups like the Genetic Literacy Project, Stats, Sense About Science, uh, putting forth um, the, you know, as I said, hardline messages, the, the climate denier comparisons. And then Mark Linus also says on the Cornell website, glyphosate is the most benign chemical in world farming. Now this is the, the anti-villain from John's talk, is Bill Gates and the Gates Foundation. They are investing massive amounts of money in, this is just one example, the propaganda campaign at Cornell, they put $12 million into a straight up communications PR campaign, elevating people like Mark Linus. It's not scientists, it's PR writers, um, some of them who've worked for the chemical industry for years, defending BPA, phthalates, all the chemicals. And they're actually training fellows around the world to advocate for genetic engineering, and they have a big focus on opening up markets in Africa to GMOs. They've also funded a lot of people to beat up on pesticide activists in Hawaii. They're constantly commenting and writing blogs, attacking journalists and community activists. So if we could get Bill Gates to switch to the eco-farm model, wouldn't that be amazing? But to read the story of how the Impossible Burger came to market, there was absolutely nothing there. They, the, in fact, it was even worse than that is that they did submit data to FDA to try and get grass status for their uh, flavoring and were refused. The documents, in fact, it was uh, US Right to Know that brought a lot of that uh, to light. But they are trying very, very hard to get the Impossible Burger out to market and they're actually targeting vegan. And if you hear the CEO of um, Impossible Burger talk, it's all about, we're offering a green solution, we're gonna uh, elim eliminate CAFO beef operations by getting everybody to eat these veggie burgers because they have blood on them and it will be accepted. And it's all a bunch of hype. They're really trying to confuse us. And uh, the implication, you know, I believe that this new wave of vat produced uh, foods that we're uh, starting to see come out, um, one of the real uh, sinister aspects of it is what it could do to farmers worldwide because many of these uh, the, the crops that they seem to be targeting are these high value flavoring crops and they also happen to be many of the crops that are helping farmers worldwide to hang 